What's up, everyone? This is your Ticket to Reality. I am your host, TJ Zwarich, Editor-in-Chief of AgentsOfFandom.com, joined, as always, by my two fellow agents and good friends, throwing it to M first. Emma Doris, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I was just talking before we started recording. The vibe is kind of off this week, but, you know, I'm, I'm ready to talk about reality TV with two of my best friends, and I think that will lift my spirits, so let's do this. Too many people out there just not here for the right reasons and uh, really just throwing the vibe of the villa off. We're going to be talking Love Island. We're going to be talking Bachelorette. We're going to be diving into the chase because my man Lee Swift right here has some thoughts and he wanted Good. to dive that in. That's the you challenge, doing? but that's okay. <laughs> you I said know. the challenge in I, the I, text. I, so you had a typo <laughs> that threw off my whole rundown and you didn't even correct I me about the show. You think? I think he was purposely waiting until the show started. <laughs> Ticket to reality. <laughs> I you just should go on, big brother. <laughs> And uh, as the one who leads the conversation on this podcast, guess what? Lee doesn't get to talk about the challenge anymore. He sabotaged me. I'm going to sabotage him right back. Uh, but after we're done breaking down these three shows, we will have our second annual Big Brother Draft. Only three of us going this time as opposed to four. And so what we decided to do is wait until there was 15 contest contestants remaining one got sent home via elimination. One got sent home via racism. And uh, we're down to 15. So we're each going to draft five and uh, hopefully give us something to cheer for. Because I don't feel like I have anything to cheer for in Love Island. Maybe let's just dive, in, dive into this one and start it off first. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button. Ring the notification bell. Make sure you're subscribed. All those good things. And if you're listening to us on your podcast platform, give us a nice five-star rating. Leave a nice little review as well. But for Love Island, and like this is one of the very first times, I think, in a reality show that we're like, can like you and I have different opinions on like who we like. Usually we're just like pretty spot on. And this show, it's different. And I think the reason why it's so different is because they all kind of suck. Like... I, uh, they really seem to be focusing on a lot of younger people in this season. And there's just a lot of people who very clearly aren't ready for a mature relationship yet. And then on the other side, there's 29 and he has no time for this shit. I'm 29. It's like, uh, it's, uh, I just, I was watching in a, I'm like, I'm always rewatching new girl, but the episode I was just on was, uh, it's pre Schmidt's bachelor party. And there's just like that random dude with the random white guy with the dreads. And he's like, it's me. I'm Kobe, Kobe. And he just keeps yelling his name at Schmidt and he gets terrified. That's how I feel about uh, Zay with I'm 29. I'm 29. I'm 29. Just keep saying it over and over and over again. Get, we get it, buddy. You're going to be 30 yeah. soon. And that sucks for you, but don't rub it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> as two people who just turned 30. Um, but anyways, back to love Island. I feel like there's just really not that many people I want to root for. And I think that's one of the reasons why, like one of the people that we're most conflicted about is Keenan. I don't think he's great by any means. He's made, made a lot of mistakes, but I think he's fine. I think in comparison to all the other guys, especially not including the ones who came from Casa and they just don't give any screen time yeah. to, he's still probably one of my favorites just because the rest of them are worse. Uh, but M, talk to me about these last few episodes. The Casa recoupling has come to a close. We're on movie night now. Movie night has been really interesting. Uh, yeah, Keenan, I feel a little bit more strongly towards my dislike. Um, but I, I'm starting to at KK. I was like, "You go, girl!" Like she walked, she came in hot during the recoupling, and I thought this was finally going to be the last straw. But no, she keeps giving him chances, and there's only so many times that you could like, you know try to like support somebody and and get like when you're seeing them kind of just make bad decisions and so you know what she can i'm just gonna let her make those decisions and hope that she realizes or better yet i hope that he goes home so that she finally has a clean slate and can just i don't know just figure it out um but honestly it's been really really interesting the biggest drama is obviously between leo and cassie uh leo is very much a piece of shit sorry uh just you know based on what i've seen on tv um he did have some regrets but like 
I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like he, he just kind of like thought, yeah, uh, it's, it's just, it's so hard to even like form coherent sentences about it because a lot of it just pisses me off, but it's I've, very entertaining. I've seen a lot of his type of behavior from former friends from like high school friend groups, college yeah. friend groups when I was younger and people that I just didn't like their behavior at the time. And now I'm very happy I have distanced myself from, um, and it, like, it just like what Leo's doing just kind of screams that for, for some backstory, for those who haven't seen Love Island and for like, for our guy Lee, you know, I'm looking at their um, pictures right now. So <laughs> Leo's been, like, Leo is just basically your, he's 22 shouldn't like it's he's not looking for love yet he's 22 yeah. um and is just basically your classic college age douchey oh boy like he just his head his head turns all the time he's always horny he thinks with his penis and not his brain um and uh so what happened with him is he'd been ca coupled up with cassie for a very long time uh says like he wants to close things off like he has just fallen for this girl the second day of Casa Amor, he sleeps with somebody. And so and sleeping somebody with somebody that looks is, like Cassie. Like, like that looks ident all. almost identical to her. Looks, I'm like corporate fun, the difference between these two. Mm -hmm. Like they're the same people. And so like for some Love Island lore, it is not often that people sleep with each other on the show. When it does happen, it's usually after they've been coupled up for a while and they get uh, chosen to go to the hideaway suite. And it's like, okay, we have a, finally have a room to ourselves and we are going to be dating on the outside. Let's do it. Um, this was just in the room with all the cameras, with all of the other people beside them asleep. Um, wow. So just had, he tells her, yeah, I've never felt this type of early connection before. He goes back and is like, eh, never mind. I still like Cassie. And just consistently handles everything poorly. Um and just like one of the more annoying things is he does the classic, like I'm the one fucking up, but I'm also going to be like, Oh, I'm just so terrible. Uh, and makes everything about himself. Yeah. And that's one of the most annoying parts of this love Island season is that seems to be everybody just wants to be the main character so badly. And they interfere in everybody else's relationships. That's another one of the, the things about like the, the Cassie and or no, sorry, the Keenan and KK thing. Like Hannah has been one of my favorite characters, like fake characters, favorite people on in the villa throughout the entire time. She's been great. But then she's having a chat with KK and Keenan goes, Hey KK, can I can we finish this chat? And she goes, Yeah, let's go chat. And then her and uh Hannah and her partner Marco, they go in there and they try and interrupt, like, no, we gotta steal KK, we gotta steal KK. And Keenan and KK are both like no, we're, we're, we're just talking. And then she spends the next two episodes being like, Oh, that was so disrespectful. I'm trying to help her. And she disrespected me. And it's like, no, you tried to bite your head in and she said, no, thank you. Like you shouldn't like, that's oh, all I that happened. Like how, I don't like how Keenan acted, but yeah, that was kind of like, okay. Like just let her at this point, you got to just, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And like, you can offer your support and you could tell them, you know, what you're doing is probably stupid, but they got to make their own decisions and mistakes. And that's the thing too, right? Is everybody's so busy trying to find reasons to be upset about things when she was like, oh, I can't believe KK would just like, let him talk to me that way. She didn't. She immediately was like, don't disrespect yeah. my friend. We're having a conversation. Don't talk to her like that. And so you're sitting there mad at your friend about something that didn't even happen just because you guys all want to make this about yourself. And the worst of them, in my opinion, left of this group is Destiny. She's just oh. nothing that she says makes sense. And she's always just trying to cause conflict and get upset about stuff. What is she it's a very to tough like group to root for. And that's kind of, it's, that's one of the reasons I, I'm, I'm enjoying the drama, but I feel like I enjoy the season a bit less than past seasons because there's always been at least like two to four people that I can be like, you're great. I really hope the best for you. Yeah. But for all of these, it's like, everybody is just going about things the wrong way all the time and it's it's pretty hard to cheer for but em talk to me about the bachelorette lift my spirits well, but, but before <laughs> she does that I, i'm a huge spirits. fan of leo just so you know <laughs> just kidding <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, watch I'm the last kidding. couple I'm episodes just of kidding. Love Island. I promise you, you won't be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of people that uh, Lee vehemently does not like, <sighs> let's talk about The Bachelor. Um, Bachelorette. <sighs> so Men Tell All was this past weekend. And I really just like the women tell all, the men tell all. It's kind of sometimes there's some interesting tidbits, but most of the time it's like they bring these people and half of the people there you don't even remember who they are they went home night one and i'm just sitting there like i don't know who this they they i think uh, jesse was like we brought together 14 of the most memorable men from the season i'm like i don't know who that is or that or that like i've never seen this guy before in my life but okay um so i was sitting there like i don't remember who most of these people are uh we, the only interesting thing to me was the apparent off-screen drama that happened with peter who i don't remember him but Apparently there was some drama in some Zoom call that they had. Uh, so that was pretty much the only interesting thing about Men Tell All. Other than that, uh, the previews for next week look interesting because I guess... It sure seemed Aaron like it, didn't it? Yeah. Back, which... <sighs> so I'm not really thrilled about that because I'm starting to really dislike yeah. Aaron as yeah. well. Uh, I just... Especially when you have Dotton and Joey there. Like, why would yeah. you need to take someone else back? But whatever, Lee. What do well, you think the, about the, the I kind of agree. The the, I of the never have season. liked these. You know, they come on, and and the yeah. guys that are still in the running aren't there. Who you're really interested in, and then they kind of. Right. It's like so awkward, and I just uh, I'm it's I'm not big on it. You know, the the but the Peter thing, the FP thing. I was like, how did I miss all that? I didn't yeah, see like, any of that. You know, I know. I First like, of all. <laughs> I was like, this is the Who only drama that's Peter? been interesting. And number two, <laughs> when did all this exactly. happen on Twitter? I missed it. You know, what the heck? No, yeah. I thought it was interesting. I the I liked when, um, oh gosh, what, I, whatever that kid is that wears the earrings. See, I already have for Braden when oh, he gave uh, Jesse earrings. That Brayden. was kind of funny. I I liked that. That was cute. And uh, I loved when they like brought that. out the the other bachelorettes to give her support. I enjoyed that. Yes. And I really do agree okay. with them. I think she's been amazing. I mean, she's been so... Oh, the other thing that I laughed out loud was that boat guy when he called her by the wrong name. He kept calling her Chastity. Oh my God. <laughs> Chastity's <laughs> a really nice girl. I'm like, oh my God. She's just you were like, in the green room <laughs> drinking way too much boat captain. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, that guy was. Uh, he probably was shouldn't like, have been there. Honestly. What producer thought of that? Because that really was not a win. He gave the rose to. So you don't know the difference between the chase and the challenge, and you're making fun of someone for not knowing the difference between charity and chastity. Typo, I need an editor for my for my uh, text messaging. <laughs> if anybody's available, just hit oh us up because I I need an editor for my text. No, I, I, I'm with you. I'm really looking forward to the finale. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty um, pretty amazing. I, I think she wins with either one of them. I think Doton's going to win. I just mm -hmm. put my money on the line. I, um, I think... Didn't you call Doton Roten the entire last episode? <laughs> no, I didn't, LJ. <laughs> <laughs> I think I... <laughs> oh, I'm hearing a little bit of hypocrisy here, Lee. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm getting served. Up. I know, I know. He's draft. ready for the draft. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, let me <laughs> extra competitive fire um, in me today. Yeah, let me talk about the challenge before because I know we got to talk. Oh, oh very go. very go. quick. Going off the Bachelorette, I I almost forgot. Uh, I am very excited oh, for yes. the Golden Bachelor because Gary oh is God. just so wholesome, and that whole entire I have never cried. Maybe maybe I've only cried one other time watching The Bachelor, um, but his whole segment about his wife and his family, I was a I was okay. a mess, and I'm just like, okay, I want to give this guy a hug. So I have to I tell you this season. story. We're watching that, Mom and I. Stephen is not a he doesn't like reality TV. He watched my show, but that's all. But Mom and I are reality reality TV people. <laughs> So when he came on, because um, he mom is 78 and he's 72. And I said, I should have put you on, you know, mm -hmm. just she goes, oh, no, he's I don't he's not my type. By the time it was over, she goes, he 
he's definitely my type because <laughs> he's so charming. <laughs> he's real. Yes. He's funny. I mean, he yep. just, uh, yeah, he's, I can't wait for the golden bachelor because I really think this is, I think yeah. he, they are, they picked a good one, you know, and the story about losing his wife, I, I mean, agree. who couldn't, who wouldn't get choked up about that house, you know? So TJ, this yeah. is what happened. He, he, his wife was not feeling well. And so he took her to the emergency room and she, you may know the story, but she had this infection and it was day like a week and a half later, she was gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, it just was such a shock and uh, his girl. And they had just yeah. bought her dream house. And his kids look awesome. His two girls. I, I just, I'm, I'm yeah, really looking forward to this. I really am. I will say this, this did irritate me about Jesse because um, just because you're 72, you, you can have sex. He was acting like, talk about the, yeah, what's like going to happen in the fantasy room. I was like, what the <laughs> hell? You know, people, He's like acting yeah. like he's some like I bet. little like thing. and I, don't I, know. Like, I yeah, really just, like Jesse a lot, but I was like, okay, you're going for the ageism jokes, you yeah. know? I mean, and you know, and if you have problems, there's blue pills now that everybody can take. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I was just gonna say, just all they need to do is have Cialis and Viagra in located in like all little of, like, candy the dishes. Dressers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. you beat me to the punch, but then I was gonna say also. That type of ageism joke is fine. They just got to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, kind of like making fun of somebody who forgets words. I mean, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. As long as it's funny, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I did want to uh, make one more point, actually, about Love Island that I forgot about before um, we dive into the challenge, and that's outside of just like this group being more invested in telling their opinions about everybody else's relationships that I, that I've seen and not just talking to their partners about it, but just like butting in and trying to make their, how they want to go about things, the mainstay of this other person's relationship. I have never in the history of my watching reality TV, I have never seen a set of producers on attack mode as much as they are in this mm. season of Love Island. Not like what what it typically is, is just like, let's try and put the entire group in awkward or uncomfortable situations. And then people will shoot themselves in the foot and we'll get great content. What it's been this year is like, they're actively trying to sabotage every situation and not even from the standpoint of, um, of just like truth telling but just straight up lying to create sabotage. So the video that they, they show this video in Casa Moore and they only showed it to the girls. They didn't show it to the guys. So they show the girls like, these are a bunch of clips of what, what's happening while you guys are gone. But then the guys didn't get them. Uh, they only sent them to the girls. And what the clips were, were just like exclusively things to piss people off and to cause fire. So it's like, they'll show a situation where a woman goes to Keenan and is trying to uh, get some action in bed and then he, but then they don't show it, him moving her hand away. They show two women saying, we had sex. How was it? Was it good? But then they won't say who it is. They, they show Marco who's with Hannah and they have, as much as I hate Marco, they probably have the strongest connection on the show. Um, they show this video and it's like, oh my God, Mark, Marco's like, my ex is here, guys. That's my ex. Oh, uh, you know, I really just feel like we didn't give things a fair shot. And then he he's immediately shut her down. Like there was no sense of anything. He was just trying to get through an awkward situation. Nothing happened. But like the people who were like not doing a whole lot, they kind of framed as like, they're trying to screw you over. And then they didn't actually really mention the people who did the really shitty stuff they just pointed that the shitty stuff happened without outlining who it was. And there's been so many examples of that with just like, they actively seem like they're trying to target a few people and cause some chaos. As opposed to just like letting the chaos unfold because there's a bunch of hot idiots in a, in a villa together. Um, And they're just kind of really always going at them. And I haven't, and I've never seen it in this type Mm. of aggressiveness before. 
yeah, I feel like these producers, I, I think of that meme of like the, I think it's the Impractical Jokers where they're all like laughing like behind a computer. And I just like, I feel like that's what the producers, they're just sitting there like, ooh, like what can we do to mess up, uh, you know, all these people, like they're they're really choosing violence and it's been quite entertaining, but <laughs> very weird. <laughs> it's like entertaining from a, here's kind of how I feel about Love Island, of this season of Love Island and then is the challenge. Entertaining on an episode to episode basis, I have no investment in the overall season. I yeah. don't really give a damn who wins because I don't want mm-hmm. any of them to. I don't think any of them deserve to. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of individual entertainment from episode to episode that just doesn't really work together as an entire season. But Lee, talk to me about the chase, the challenge, the chastity, the charity. <laughs> What's the show called? He's not going to let me ever live this down. It is it is called the Che no. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> now I I hope you guys will watch it because it's CBS and so there's Big Brothers on there. There's um, Survivor, all the CBS shows, The Amazing Race, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you guys, I, I the Real World. Did you, did you ever watch the Real World on MTV? Okay, so the to. very first yeah. one we Stephen and I watched that many years ago, so we're old. My favorite, of course, of Real World is season two with Pedro, but um, look it up. It's pretty amazing. A, 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 he he had HIV, and it was just pretty amazing moment. Uh, great, great television. Anyway, some of these people are real world people that turned into, you know, more reality stuff. But um, but I, I always root for Big Brother because I'm such a Big Brother fan, and Tyler is on there from a season. You, you know, you guys know um, Tiffany. You remember Tiffany from the cookout? She's on there. She's amazing. Yes. Yeah, she's on there. Oh, so okay. you'll know some of it. Amara left. I mean, she was the first one out. It's mm-hmm. But they brought in what were called, um, they're calling them, what are they calling them? Challenge vets. These are people that have done multiple challenge and won or finished well. So they brought six of them and said, here they are. And they then they divided everybody into three teams and they had to have two challenge vets on each team. Well, the dummies on the the first vote, they vote out somebody who's not a challenge vet. And I was like, you guys, you guys are dumb. But then this last episode, they're like, wait a second. These, ch- these challenge vets are going to knock us off one by one. So they voted off. They did end up voting off a... a but I love the challenge because, you know, at the end, two people, have you guys watched it? Have you ever watched the challenge? So, so, I've heard so of it. they I do, know, it's very physical. It. I mean, there's not typically older people in it at all, but it's very, it's a very endurance physical kind of uh, thing. And so you do these team things, <clears throat> which. You got to bring Joseph in there from BB24. Uh, I don't think he was in there, but that'd be, yeah. Jo- yeah. They should. I mean, you <laughs> yeah, know, you probably should. know some. Well, you guys don't. Polly's from Big Brother. Tyler's from Big Brother. Let me see who else is on here. I had him here. Uh, Big Brother, Big Brother. Amara, who went out. Alyssa. You remember Alyssa? Um, she's on mm, there. Yeah. And Josh <laughs> Martinez. He's from a previous one that you guys didn't watch. And then there's another in Alyssa, which uh, Fessy. I mean, there's a whole bunch. You'll start seeing them. I mean, You'll start seeing them. But anyway, they do, the teams do these big, hard challenges. One of the challenges they did, they had these statues of the vets that were huge and, and made of whatever. And they're all, I had to carry them up this hill in a race of the teams. And whoever got there ended up not, and they had to place them. And whoever got it, then that team is safe. And then you, you pick two people, and I won't go into how they're picking them this year. It's very interesting, though. And um, those two people go up for elimination and then they go head to head in the challenge. And it's a very physical thing. Like one, the one Amara went on, they hoisted the two girls up and it's always the same sex, same gender, female or male. And they dropped them in this pool and they had to get these balls out. And then they, they just kept dunking them over and over and over. Whoever had the most balls out in 15 minutes won. So, and then the next one they did, it was, balls coming out and they just had to wrestle whoever grabbed the ball okay don't i didn't even think of 
balls everywhere. That sounds like your kind of game. I tried. <laughs> if you just said it once or twice, I would have. Okay, I'm done. Anything but watch the challenge. I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> well, this is why you got to watch us in video form on YouTube. Hit that like button so you can just see Lee going balls. Balls everywhere. There's just all – there's balls. You dive into the pool for balls. You sink if you got too many balls. You got balls hitting you in the face. It's just uh... – I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Go on. Move on. Move on. Watch the challenge. I'll be talking about it. So I'm interested in what you think. Turns out without Garrett or Ryan here for Lee to pick on, it just turns yes. to me picking on Lee yes. throughout the entire time. But it's because it's draft day. I got more competitive fire okay. on draft day. I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to win. You guys aren't my friends. You're my competitors. Is this your third oh, draft wow. this week? This is my third draft wow. this week. Yeah, I was on the direct podcast for a uh, comic book movie wow. origin draft. Um, I was happy with how that went. You know what? My theme was important movies and so i went with uh iron man the dawn of the mcu blade in 1998 we don't have superhero movies today uh if uh blade wasn't successful as well as x-men in the year 2000 giving us hugh jackman's wolverine one of the most popular and iconic characters in the history of comic book movies and then i finished things out getting a little different trying to include everybody with the incredibles uh, because The Incredibles is just one of the best Pixar movies there is, it. and it's fantastic. Um, and then this past week on the Agents of Fandom podcast, we drafted in uh, in honor of Ahsoka coming to Disney Plus shortly, and uh, it's going to pull heavily from Star Wars Rebels. We drafted our own kind of Star Wars Rebel squad, so we each had to have two Force users, a pilot, a droid, a couple of uh, wild cards. And uh, you can find that up on the Agents Fandom Podcast. So make sure you check that one out as well because we had a lot of fun. I think that was one of the most fun drafts I've I've had because of just like the different categories and having to fill a team. You know, it's not just picking a person. You're trying to pick a team that meshes together. And I, I always find that fun. My inner fantasy sports comes out. But let's dive into Big Brother because it is draft time. There are 15 contestants remaining. We've knocked... Two of them out, Kirsten, who looks exactly like Laura Harrier, just an absolute carbon copy. Speaking of superhero movies from Spider-Man Homecoming, she played Liz, um, and they just look absolutely identical. We got rid of Luke. Why? Because Luke's a racist, and so we don't want any racists on our show, so we just tossed him right out the door. Luke, or, uh, Lee, we don't have, uh, there you go, I'm messing up names now too. Uh, we, we don't have, uh, we don't have your list to go off of like we did last year. Last year you wrote up your favorite, uh, like a big brother ranking. I wasn't going to do that this time. I want to, I want to win. I came in dead last. Mm. So I, I, I tell you what I'll (laughs) do. I will write something about that. Um, and after, after we picked our team, yes. All right. Well, we have first overall pick. I just put us in a randomizer here. We have Emma number one, Lee number two, TJ number three. So without further ado, Emma, who would you like to start off the Big Brother draft with, with your number one overall pick? And are you keeping, who's keeping it? Who's keeping the record here? Good question. Um, I'll uh, make a little thing right now. Because cause I'm old, I might forget who I picked. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, honestly. I think for number one, I think I would like to... Oof, this is tough. I think I'd like to go with Felicia. Um, because I absolutely love her. And, you know, I would thought about Hysom because he's HOH right now. Thought about Riley, but it seems like Riley's on her way out. Uh, Heisem has put a big target on his back now at this point. And so Felicia seems to be solid in her alliances. And I just love her and I want to root for her. So that's my number one pick. I like it. I like how she always says her name before. Like when she's saying things, she talks about herself in the third person. She goes, she's so adorable. Felicia's been through some things. She's not afraid of it. You know, Felicia's ready. Uh, uh, great pick, number one overall. 
We who do you got number two? Nicole. Mm, and I like her. Yeah. I like I it. Why are you picking Nicole? Nicole? Because she is not all the I'm telling you, talking about a cast that just blabs, I'm like, you know, uh, yeah. they, they aren't playing any strategy. I mean, Siri's playing a strategy and a few other, but McColl is playing back in the background, watching, paying attention. Yes. Watch her. She's going to go far, I think. So she's my number one. I think so, too. Um, I like it. I think that's a good pick. For what it's worth, I haven't seen episode three yet, so I'm a little bit behind. I feel like I'm, I'm drafting at a bit of a disadvantage here. But uh, I don't really care. I'm going to run it anyways. I like one thing I like uh, from my what I've learned from years of drafting and doing fantasy sports is the importance of correlation. Uh, it's important to correlate things together. And so I know there's two people in particular who will be on the same team, no matter what until the end. And so I'm going to get them both on my team with the snake pick here. I'm going to go Sari fields with my first round pick mm. followed by Jared fields with my, Dang first it. Round pick. <laughs> okay. I'm not bitter. Yeah. I almost, I almost thought of, I almost took Suri first, and I probably should have. But I thought I'm I happy could with wait, him. wait him out. But okay, you got Jared and Suri. <laughs> but I really, i in my opinion, that's a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number two is going to be, and it's, oh gosh, though, I need to get. Mm, you know what? My number two is going to be Bowie. I love her. Mm -hmm. I think she's fun and has high energy. She's also, I have, I have McColl on one side and I have Bowie on the other side. I will say the handful Alliance is going to fall apart. I don't, I don't even think the yeah. professors are going to stay. I, I think these two big alliances are too big. And I think, you know, the, the, okay. So I got Bowie. I love, I like her. This really is a season of doppelgangers because Bowie is that's yes, pink. yes, yes, yes. Like like it's pink. Pink. <laughs> that's so that funny. So I funny. really, when she was on my, that's exactly what my mother said. She looks just like pink. I was like, yeah, she does. <laughs> All right, Emma, you got back to back picks. Who are you going with? All right, so I'm gonna go with. This is kind of tough. Um. I think I'm going to go with Jag nice. next. Um, he, so I want somebody on, you know, one side of the house, somebody on the other. He seems to be pretty strong so far. Uh, you know, not really like ruffling too many feathers. Uh, I think he's a good player. So I'll go with him. Um, and then after that, I think I will go with Izzy because I just love Izzy. And I don't know. I think maybe... I don't know that she's going to last for a while, but I'm going to have fun watching her because she's just, yeah. she's just great. Yeah. And I love her personality. I like it. What about uh, your next one? Or did you just go two back to back? I started writing uh, down Jag and then I missed uh, your second pick. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, ja oh, that's okay. Jag and then Izzy. Jag and then Izzy. No, that's why I just <laughs> dropped it from my brain. I was trying to keep that correlation. He knows about Suri and Jared, so I was trying to get her on my oh, team that's too. Fair. Yeah, Oops. Uh, but I will tell you on that those three people. I think there's a problem, and I think it's Izzy because I think Izzy is going to. Mm -hmm. She's got too big a mouth. Jared also is her, his mom. That. Sari keeps saying, hey, hey, don't talk so much. Yeah. It's going to be found out. And when it's found out, um, probably two of them are yep. gone, you know, honestly. So yeah. so I'm okay. I'm probably, I'm trying to convince myself it's okay. I didn't get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, golly. Golly, golly, golly. You know who? My favorite person has not been picked. And so I'm hoping they fall to me. Um. I have two. Um, golly, you guys, you guys are gonna think this is crazy if I do that. Um, do it because I don't. I think 
I think one of these two. Uh, okay. Five. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go red. Red. The chill Billy. Chill Billy <laughs> off the board. You have left me with my favorite person. I thank you. I have not even thought through who my next pick is going to be. But this is the person I was hoping to get um, from just like an enjoyment standpoint because I think it's who I'm cheering for. I'm going to Damn take it. Matt. That was my the board. That was what He's I was struggling it. with. I'm so <laughs> mad. I wanted. Yeah, I was like, mad or red, mad or red. Dang it. I am so pissed. I'm I pissed at you. Clearly being, uh, <laughs> clearly being a uh, deaf Olympian, he – um, is going to do very well in the physical challenges. Yeah. I think how clearly amazing he is at lip reading is probably going to come in Damn. pretty handy as well. Um, I'm going to go with Matt here. With my next one, I was hoping to go Matt Izzy. And so uh, that's tough. But let me see. Who do I want to go with my next pick here? I think... It's always it, it's I feel like it bodes well to always have people who can do well in physical challenges. And so I'm gonna roll with Hisam. Yeah, he's good. Not a not a fan, even though he's gay. I'm just I I don't think he's playing well. Yeah. I just really don't, but that's mm-hmm. That's fair, and I haven't seen episode three, so I'm going strictly just based off of he has some muscles, and I'm hoping he can yeah. stick around yeah, in some that physical was my, challenges. He was way low he on mine. Physical challenges. Um, okay. Yeah. Can't so win them all. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, I'm struggling, because you're going to... Because I got one more pick after this, right? Okay, so I got two. Yeah. We each have two um, more. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Cameron. I probably should have gone the other way, but I'm going Cameron. It, yeah, even even though he's on the block, <laughs> I think he's... Watch him go home. <laughs> You know, well, yeah, you know, well, Riley I mean, yeah, pulls a fast one, and gets it, but I'm I'm gonna go Cameron. Yeah. Why don't I even remember? He's got who the Cameron wild is. hair in his country. He's like, oh yeah, I see. I trust the other guy because he's a stoner from the country and he wears a lot of tie dye, mm-hmm. and so I feel like he's my fi- he's the kind of country boy I like. This yeah, guy, when nice. you're, I don't trust it. Yeah. I don't trust yeah, it. I, I I fear when the live cams are on, we might get something racist from Maybe. him too. Maybe. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right. Okay. And back to you with back-to-back picks, your last two picks of the draft. All right. So my next one is going to be America. Um, she so far has done, I believe she's done well in the uh, comps, I think. Um, she just seems really personable and fun and, Hasn't really ruffled too many feathers either, so I like her. Um, and then I think I what was the name again? Sorry, I was uh, on America. America, nice. That's who I was hoping to get yeah. with my last one. And then now I'm kind of struggling. Uh, it's Corey Blue or Riley is left. That's right. <laughs> Riley's going to end up being. Uh, I like Blue. I'm going to go with Blue. So... I, I, I just, think I, I think like that's it. a great choice. She seems cool. I really do. I'll take Corey then, clearly, because I'm not taking Riley. <laughs> no. What's wrong with Riley? She's about she to be get voted off. <laughs> wow. Did we just do that to you? <laughs> <laughs> I realized after the fact, as we were doing this, that with there being an odd number of rounds, it really is a detriment to have the last pick. Cause you know, if it's an even number, it's like, well, I, I get right. It's the snake. Right. So it's like, I'll have yeah. the first pick in the last round, but th- I, I don't have that. Now I got the last pick in the first round and the last round. So that was definitely a disadvantage. Um, but here's, here's what I'll say. If she happens to survive getting voted yeah. off this week, being 
being hot takes you along takes you far in life and so uh even if that's kind of all she has going for her in the game uh <laughs> she might all be Alyssa able had going for her last season so and it, and it worked she went pretty darn far uh and so uh i'm hoping that'll uh work i really feel great about my first three picks maybe my last two not so much i got sari jared matt hasim and riley uh lee McCall, who do you Cameron, got on your red Corey, and bowie and i'm happy with my team i really am i think it's a good team you got yeah. both the country yeah. boys on your team and who do you got on your squad I think it's it's blue America. Felicia America Izzy. Jag and Izzy. Yeah, Felicia. I, I, there I, you go. Thank you. <laughs> I already forgot. Here's what I think we should do. If you want to make a oh. trade, Emma, mm-hmm. and you take Riley, and I will take Jag, and then you have the old girl squad. No. <laughs> no I thanks. I tried. <laughs> I, I I respect the yeah. effort, but no. <laughs> uh, I had to shoot my shot, uh, but I guess I'll take the person who's probably going probably. to get voted off. But we will see. Maybe she won't, and we will let you know our thoughts about it next week on another episode of Ticket to Reality, where we will still touch a little bit on Love Island, Big Brother, or sorry, Love Island, The Bachelorette, and as well as the challenge. However. Our main focus is going to be breaking down the first few episodes of Big Brother. The draft is now in the world. It's in the universe. And we have our people we're going to be cheering for. And so next week, we're going to be breaking down the gameplay. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for joining us this week. On behalf of myself, Emma, Lee, and all of the Ticket to Reality and Agents of Fandom crew, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next Bye. week. Peace.